Good evening and welcome to See You at USC. I'm your Monday night host, Alexia Narcisse, and we are here with musician Katie Ferrara. Stay tuned. back. Thank you all for tuning in. We are so, so excited. I am here with Katie Ferrara. So for those of you who don't know her, she is soon to be a music superstar. Um, you remind me so much of Sarah Bareilles, actually, which is <laughs> funny because she's an acoustic star as well. But I want to know more a bit about your coming to music, how you found that this was your passion, and how you ended up where you are now. Um, I, I've always wanted to do music, and um, I just, I spent a long time just trying to make it work. Mm -hmm. And I first told myself, no, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to go and get my degree and become a teacher. And I, I had like a, a breakthrough when I was 24. I, was, I, I thought, no, I, I just I can't do this anymore. I really just want to go for my music career full on. So um, I, I, started, um, I started busking um, in L.A. And that was a way for me to... to make money and, and really mm. continue doing what I'm passionate about. Because I, I started playing, I started singing when I was in um, high school. And from from there, I like learned guitar. And, and I went to college and started writing my own songs. And um, I always just, I did music like as a hobby. Like I didn't really take it like seriously until, you know, I was in a position where I was, I was thinking, what am I going to do for the rest of my life? And what am I, why am I on this planet? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So yeah, I, I just I had that breakthrough moment when I was like, this is what I really love doing, and and I have to keep doing it. How can I sustain myself and 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 keep doing it? Yeah. Now, were you always so comfortable performing in front of people, or is that something that came to be after a while? Um, I th I think it 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 came after doing a lot of performances. I, I think oh. when I first started, I. I I was really nervous. I mean, I still get nervous when I play. <laughs> so, um, but I, I definitely think that it, it took a lot of practice to, to really feel comfortable in front of people. Of course. Yeah. Now, for someone like yourself, you went from being, like you said, not performing in front of a lot of people constantly to busking, which for those of you who don't know what busking, that is like literally performing in front of anyone, anywhere, and just kind of saying, here's my music, here's my passion, take it or leave it. What like led you to pick up busking? <laughs> um, I I had a New Year's resolution. Um, I I saw some people on the Santa Monica Promenade playing, and I thought, okay, why can't I do I that? I can do that. <laughs> I can do that. I can do that. And I I made this resolution as January two thousand fourteen. Said I'm I'm gonna get a permit and I'm just gonna go out there and and play and and part of me doing that was. Um, because I, I just felt like, you know, in LA, there's, there's so many, um, there's so many people here trying to make it in the music industry. And, and most people think like, okay, well, I'll just pack up my bags and go to Hollywood and, you know, someone's going to discover me mm -hmm. by playing in a venue. But the reality is that like a lot of these venues, they, they make you sell tickets or they, mm. they tell you that, um, you know, you can play for exposure, but nobody really comes to the gigs. You have to like do all the work as an artist. Yeah, you're doing the outreach. You're doing the outreach, and and for me, I felt like, well, when when I busk, like, I don't have to bring anybody out. I can just set up and play anywhere. That's really brilliant PR <laughs> for yourself. <laughs> you can set up and play anywhere, and and then you meet people, and and I think what what has helped me a lot, what I've realized from my street performances is is that um, you know it's all about the relationships that you make with people it's not about mm -hmm. um, you know getting like likes on your Facebook page or like you know a fan is somebody yeah. who really um, appreciates your music and really wants to to get to know the artist so through these street performances I, I've I found that um, 
you know, I've really gotten to know like the communities that I've I visited and and just set up in. If I, if I go back, each we time. even have you here. It looks like this oh. is the pier. Yeah, that's Am the I same right? Like pier, yeah. Oh, that's way too cool. <laughs> so you actually, do you carry all this stuff with you in the car, or do you just kind of like throw it on your back and just pop, <laughs> like set up shop? Um, I yeah, I have most of my equipment in my car. I I keep like my amp and um, my. I don't keep my guitar in there, I take it out, but um, I keep a lot of stuff. <laughs> keep it's that heavy. one in there. <laughs> yeah, I have, like, I don't know if you saw in the picture, but I have my cart, um, and I, I oh put my wow. amp on there. And just kind of roll it out. I roll it out. Um, I, I have different setups wherever I go, but I, I definitely have a lot of equipment that I haul around. And in LA, do you have to have permits, or how does that work? Because I'm imagining on Rodeo, <laughs> you can't just pop shop right in front of like the Gucci store. and. <laughs> start performing your stuff yeah you know um, it just depends on where you go like if you go to the Santa Monica promenade or the pier it's a very um, popular spot in LA you need a permit mm -hmm. um, but there's some places where you don't and you really just have to check with the city council wherever ah, you're setting up okay. just see um, you know what are the noise restrictions sometimes um, people think well uh, I can't be amplified but as long as you're like at a certain level that's not disturbing, you know, the, the noise restrictions around you, then you're, you're fine to be amplified. Okay. Um, you, just, you just have to ask the right people. You okay. Know. Now I'm wondering if there's such thing as like a busking foul. Like <laughs> if you set up way too close to someone, does that happen? Because I notice when yes. I'm walking the Santa Monica promenade, there's like guys dancing here, and then I've got a magic show that's like maybe 10 feet away, and then a musician that's, you know, a little bit further down. What Are there like rules of just general respect that you guys kind of... I think there's unspoken rules. <laughs> okay, name like three of the unspoken rules of busking. Well, if two people set up in the same area and they're both musicians, or mm -hmm. you want to be very aware of um, your sound space because you're sharing the space with somebody else and if you play louder than them, then they're not no going to be- No one can hear Nobody them. can hear. And then what I see a lot of people do is they compete with each other oh. and they both turn up their amps and I, you know, I, I think the the best thing to do in a situation like that is to take turns with the performer next to you. Like maybe you play like for 10 minutes and then the other person plays for 10 minutes. And it's actually really great because a lot of people think that they have to play like the whole time through in their yeah. time slot. But um, actually it's better to stop and actually um, just wait until some people start gathering around mm -hmm. you and, and ask you, oh, are you gonna play? Are you gonna play yet? It's, 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 it's better because the person playing down the street like you could be you could be waiting for them to finish and, and really talking uh -huh. to people around you while you before you set up your own show. Okay, so did you start finding that when you were doing these busking I don't want to call them busking events, but <laughs> when when you were busking your butt off <laughs> and <laughs> if you found a region, was it like did you have a place you went to every day? Kinda like food trucks where I know every Thursday if I want to get a grilled cheese or an acai bowl, I know I can go down on fig and get it at the same place. You know, I I have a travel itch. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, find me where I go. <laughs> yeah, you know, I know a lot of buskers that just, they stay in one place. And mm -hmm. I I just like exploring. And I think, I, I tried staying in Santa Monica for a bit. And I just, I found that it was just too noisy. There's too many people there. Mm. And I wanted to try Burbank. So I stayed there for a little bit. I went for like three or four months. And now I go like occasionally, like, you know, like once or twice a month, I'll set up there. Um, but there's like certain markets that I'll go to, like um, there's like the Melrose Trading Post, um, I'll set up there, or um, I used to go to the Altadena Farmer's Market a lot. Um, okay, Monrovia so your Farmer's places Market. were like, yeah. people, did people know you were coming? Yeah. To an extent, I, they're like, I'll oh, sh Katie's coming, she's gonna perform today. Well, what I will do is I'll, I'll post on my, my Facebook page or my, um, oh. my website, I'll say, hey, I'm gonna be performing at this farmer's market or I'll be showing up here or I'll tell people in my newsletters that I send out hey I'm gonna be busking in this specific spot and I'll let them know oh, that's way too cool. um, before I would just I would just show up and and you <laughs> just know, start going just going I think for me like I just like I said I love exploring and I love going to new places and, and part of me doing these performances is is just to like try out my songs to new groups of people. Mm -hmm. But I, I definitely think there's there's something to be said about, about going back to the same spot because you really do get to know mm -hmm. um, people in the area that you play. Now I wonder if you could just describe to me what your first busking experience was, what that felt like. 
to kind of just set up and then say, you know, do you just go for it? Or did you have friends there for support? Like two or three people like, <laughs> look, you guys cannot leave the entire time that I'm here. I need you clapping. <laughs> what was your first experience like? Um, well, the first time I set up on the promenade, this was before I made that New Year's resolution. I'm, I, I, the first time I had set up, I did everything wrong. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. I did everything wrong, which was a good thing because I learned so much from that. I learned, okay, um, I need to find a way to carry all my equipment so I don't get tired. I, I had, like, my guitar in one hand and my mic stand in the other and an amp and, like, everything was really heavy. And so I started walking around and looking and seeing what all the other performers had. Some people had car batteries. Some people had, oh, um, wow. they had carts. And I thought, okay, I need to get that. And then um, I, I, I just, I watched other people because I, when, I, when I first started, okay, my battery died. <laughs> Oh and my no, amp the mid work. Day. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, and and then I set up by a, a fire hydrant. I wasn't following any of the, <laughs> the, <laughs> any the of protocol. The, the protocol. <laughs> and you're just I set up in a fire zone and I got yelled at and I was like, oh, this is a horrible experience. So when I made the resolution in, in January in 2014, I I had been prepared. I, I, I did everything wrong. You had so the research yeah, this time around. Yeah, I was like, you know what? Like I, I know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a set list. I'm going to memorize my songs. I'm going to have a merch table. Oh, that's too cool. Um, I'm going to have a sign. A sign is really, really important when mm. you're playing because you don't just want to be a nobody just out in the middle of the street. You, you want people to, to find you online as well. Ah, that's very smart. Now, I, I think about aspiring musicians and everyone has different goals. There's people like Chance the Rapper who's like, if a label bothers me again, <laughs> I am going to go into the lobby and set the place on fire. And then there's people that are like, I need to be signed to a label. Like that's my goal, that's what I want. Do you have a vision for what you'd like to see yourself doing in the next five years in terms of music? That's a really good question. Um, I wanna be making a sustainable living off my music. And and right now I'm, I'm you know, at the beginning of that, I'm, I'm living, off my music and I want to be making more hey, money that's doing a good it, place to be in which too. is <laughs> it's, it's it's great it's a lot of hard work and I, I think that if you're a hard-working musician you don't necessarily need a label or um, need these things that musicians say that you, you need mm -hmm. you can you can make things work for you that's beautiful yeah. now we'll be right back after this break and you guys are actually going to get to see Katie perform do you know what song you're gonna be performing or uh, I'm gonna play a song called in your arms and it's okay. off my my EP that I just put out Ooh, okay so she's gonna be performing in your arms and Katie is also about to go on tour I believe March 8th is your first day which is a Wednesday yes. she's gonna be performing here in Los Angeles downtown downtown at Whole Foods okay perfect oh and I we're gonna talk a bit more about Whole Foods because it it looks like you're doing some work with them yeah. which is organic and feels so good <laughs> so we'll talk about that right after the break stay tuned Katie Ferrara.
That was absolutely beautiful, lovely, outstanding, breathtaking, awe-inspiring. Now, where can people see you perform? Um, well, actual shows I have coming up. Yes. <laughs> I guess they're not like like traditional shows. Um, so what I was saying before, or what you had mentioned, is that um, I'm playing uh, a show in downtown LA at Whole Foods. And this is going to happen on um, March 8th. And um, I'm basically putting on a show with my other singer-songwriter friend, Shani Rose. Um, and we are raising awareness of the Whole Planet Foundation through an in-store uh, performance at Whole Foods. And, and these performances are going to take place not only in downtown LA, but we're going on tour. So oh, stellar. Um, yeah. So we're, we're going to Palm Springs, um, Tucson, Phoenix, and then Austin on the month oh, of March. Oh, and Austin has a huge live music scene. Are you guys going to go down on 6th Street and perform? Yeah. Oh, spectacular. <laughs> now, I have to ask about the Whole Planet Foundation yes. because I did a bit of research on it. And for the first few minutes, I'm like, this has to be linked to Whole Foods yes. because the whole <laughs> is the Whole Foods logo. So I was like, there's either some really heavy copywriting going on or, yeah. or this is linked to them. So how did you find this foundation? I'm assuming they found you. Um, well, I've been involved with uh, Whole Planet through um, Planet LA Records. And Planet Alley Records, they put on a summer music series in uh, Whole Foods uh, locations in LA, like the West Hollywood location. Oh. They've done stuff um, in downtown as well. And um, it, it's basically an organization that, that works with Whole Planet to help raise awareness of the charity. So I don't know if, if, if you know what the charity does, but they basically help alleviate poverty um, through entrepreneurship. And they empower uh, women in, uh, I think it's 69 countries around the world, um, to start their own businesses. Because um, the, the thing about being um, an entrepreneur and, and the great thing about this, this program is that, um, you know, they're really helping women um, do what they want to do with mm -hmm. their lives. They don't have to be reliant on anybody else. They can really pull themselves out of poverty and, and contribute something to the world that they, they just enjoy doing. So um, for, for me, myself, and, and my friend Shani, we, we both just fell in love with, with the cause um, of Whole Planet Foundation. And um, we, we connect to it because we're both female entrepreneurs. We're I both was going to say, you guys completely reflect the work of the organization. <laughs> <laughs> we, we started from the ground up with, with our music. And um, 
you know, we, we want to be able to empower um, other women in different businesses, um, not just in music, but, you know, in any kind of business just to go for what they like doing. Wow, that's yeah. so spectacular. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, seeing a performance like that, I'm like, it doesn't, it sounds perfect, you know? <laughs> like, how often do you have to practice a song to get it right? I don't practice enough, <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest, I don't practice enough, and a lot of my practice is in the street when I'm performing. So, um, the best practice. It's the best practice, to, to be honest. Like, I, I, I have less and less time to actually, um, be doing it in my bedroom and I just think you know what like the best way to get good at being in front of people is just to perform in front of mm. people in general. So. so for students who are in positions similar to yours where they have this dream in music and they want to follow uh, in a footstep like yourself mm -hmm. in saying that you know I want to be an entrepreneur I want to make something for myself what is the best advice that you have for them? Uh, for students like in, in music? Well, we'll say specifically music okay. pertaining to this question. Yeah um, I would say that you know half of being successful is um, you know how skilled you are at your instrument um, you know it's 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 really just about hard work and pers persistence and you know having skills and and um, you know knowing about the business side that's the other half it's it's the actual art and then the business side and a lot of people just don't they don't really know how to apply their music mm, and the I business piece. yeah and I, and I think you know especially in the times that we live in, um, you know, there's just so many, there's so many musicians out there. There's so many people trying to do the same thing. It's like, what can you do um, that's different? And what can you do um, to help people with your music? And I think that's mm -hmm. especially true in, in, in other businesses as well, just to think, okay, how is my product helping people? And then I think once you figure that out, you can really find a, an audience for, you know, your, your music. Yeah, your music. Now, do you, if you could name three musicians that you're like, <laughs> this is my go-to, like this is my person, this is my inspiration, I would love to sit down with them or follow in their footsteps, who would those three be? Oh. <laughs> I know it's hard, but I gave you three. <laughs> so we have a little wiggle room here. Um, I, I really love Joni Mitchell. I mean, she's probably one of the older Excellent. musicians, yeah. but uh, I, I just grew up listening to her music, and so I... I love um, the freedom in her voice and her songwriting. Um, I I would love to I'd love to meet Nora Jones. Ooh. <laughs> I thought of Nora Jones when you were performing this song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just I love um, like the style of music that she creates. And um, third, the third group. Uh, I'm trying to get thinking of another another musician I'd like to meet. Um, probably a pop musician. Just okay. someone different. Yeah, <laughs> Lady someone Gaga. Different. <laughs> I know it's kind of weird, but like Lady Gaga, like she's just so inspirational because she, I mean, she doesn't care what people think of her. Mm -hmm. I love, I love like the strength in her music. I, it, she's just, she's excellent. I mean, it's a different genre of what I listen to, but I just, I love what she represents. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I think you touched on something really important earlier, and you said when you're trying to create a brand for yourself or your, your own type of music, you, you want to find what you do differently than other people. What makes you stand out? Yeah. What do you feel that is for you? <laughs> um, I think that, I think that my, my music really, um, it's soothing to people. And mm. I think that it, it helps people if, if they're going through, um, you know, Let's uh, like something a phys like a surgery or they're going Break up. you know a breakup <laughs> or you know emotionally it helps people but I think more more than that like I, th I think just my story helps people mm. and especially in the times that we live in I think that if people can connect with with the artists themselves um, that's what's going to sell your music and with with me I I think that a lot of people just see me I, I'm hardworking I think that makes me stand out yes of course and and a lot of people. They like seeing that, and they, they get inspired by that. So I, I, I think people find my music in inspiring. I think that's what sets me apart. It's just, it's inspiring. So what can we expect from your next album or EP? <laughs> um, I would like to do a full length next. Um, mm -hmm. I just put out um, uh, an EP called Dreamcatcher, and I did a Kickstarter for that, and uh, it's it's available on my website. I'm going to be touring with this, uh, this, this next month. Um, but my next EP, um, or sorry, my next full length, or my first full length actually. Um, I want it I want it to be 
um, a collaboration between some of the best producers and songwriters in LA, and I, I, I want it, I don't know, I have to think about it, but I, I definitely want it to be, um, to show a progression in my music. And I'm sure we will. Yeah. We're, g we're gonna get to see it, yeah. so we'll be able to figure out what that is. Yeah. Thank you so much thank for you. coming on today. Yeah. It was fantastic to meet you, everyone. Thank you for watching tonight. Follow her on social media, and we'll be back next week. You're watching Trojan Vision. For more of your favorite shows, check us out at trojanvision.com and like us on Facebook. The year was 1938, and the U.S. sat on the brink of another world war. The American people looked for diversion from the trials and tribulations of a new century and its new problems. In 1940, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt authorized the release of an entirely new form of entertainment. Today, a hope of many years standing is in large part fulfilled. It was called the Trojan Visual and Auditory Mimeograph Device, or Trojan Vision for short. As bombs fell and war was waged, society tuned to 8.1 for relief. Throughout American history, Trojan Vision has shown us the moments of emergency.